Today, I'm gonna to try to turn this Altoid tin into something that could potentially save your life. I wanna make the world's tiniest surgical survival kit, and the whole thing is going to have to fit inside of this box. The problem is most surgical instruments aren't tiny, and they're kind of expensive. So that's gonna make this really, really hard to do. I'm gonna start off with putting together some ground rules and looking for inspiration where I can find it. And I'm gonna use this special book that I've put together with googly eyes when I need to really uh, get creative. So let's do it. Ground rules. Number one, everything has to fit inside the tin. Makes sense, everything has to fit inside. For number two, I'm saying all items must be at least one step or less from being a surgical tool. One step away would be something that helps sterilize a surgical instrument. Something that goes in this kit that can be used to start a fire that could sterilize instruments. That counts. So number three, all items total have to cost less than $50. Okay. And then number four, think of this as a toy. I'm just doing this for fun. I would not actually choose to do this to provide medical care. Just putting that out there. The application of a sterile pad or bandage to the wound will normally stop the bleeding and allow the blood to clot. Apply direct pressure with a sterile compress or gauze. When a blood vessel has been cut, position the victim in a way to decrease the force of blood flowing to the wound. Give the victim plenty of fresh air. Direct pressure with sterile gauze or other clean material will slow the flow of blood and promote clotting. When bleeding is so severe that application of direct pressure or a constricting bandage is not sufficient to control it, a tourniquet can be used. A tourniquet can clamp off the entire blood supply to certain parts of the body and cause extensive damage to the skin and underlying tissue. Therefore, it is used as a last resort only after other methods have failed. Okay, so I think I have everything picked out and right now we're gonna assemble the tin. So this is the empty Altoid tin here. You can see it's been spray painted and dressed up a little bit. And we're gonna build everything from scratch. So here goes. So the first item that I... Hold on. Let me show you the shot that I'm about to get. Let's look. Before I show you that shot setup, I wanna mention that this week's video is sponsored by a really special company named Canvas. Canvas makes this incredible product that helps you get really beautiful, crisp overhead video shots, not to mention a bunch of other creative angles. And what makes it so special is that it's like having multiple products all in one. It's a lamp, but it's also this really high quality ring light with three different color temperatures. And it holds your phone, positioning it right in the center of that light, guaranteeing that your shot is perfectly lit every single time. When you position this lamp and let it go, it's super stable. There's no drift, there's no wiggle. So you can set it up, get the shot, and move on. And one thing that I really love is it lets you replace a bulky, expensive overhead setup, like the tripod and the holder and the lighting and all of this stuff that you'd normally have to set up just for one overhead shot. Right in the lamp, it takes two seconds, and then you're done. And some of the shots that you're gonna see on my YouTube channel were actually made using the canvas lamp, like the one you're looking at right now. The lamps themselves come in black and white and the bases come in a variety of like really gorgeous sturdy materials. Everything from marble to wood to different types of metals. Right now I'm using their limited edition all matte black lamp and base combination. Honestly I love this thing and if they hadn't sponsored me I probably would have bought one anyway. To get your own use the link in the description below and make sure to use my code to get 10% off your order. All right. Back to the video. So the first item that I'm gonna put in this tin is suture. I feel like what's more surgical than suture? Now, what's unique about this particular kind of suture is that it's on what we call a straight needle. Most of the time suture's on a curved needle and then we need another instrument called a needle driver to actually use that suture. What's kind of handy about this suture is you can actually hold the needle with your hands and sew with everything here. And at the very end, once you've tied your knot, there's actually an element on the tip of this needle that you can use to cut your suture. Next in our kit is this itty bitty piece of gauze. This is a two by two square piece of gauze. Normally when we make a surgical 
uh, dressing, we use a lot more gauze. But if I'm making a surgical survival kit, I can't not put gauze in there. So here's our two by two piece of gauze. Next item is Tegaderm. Now this is also a really tiny piece of Tegaderm. If you haven't seen Tegaderm before, I think the best way to think about it is if imagine if you were sort of manually building a band-aid when you put it on someone. So you'd have a soft sort of absorbent part and then you'd have a more adhesive part. When we make a dressing, often the gauze will be the more absorbent part. And then this Tegaderm, the part that goes on top, this is kind of the adhesive part of that dressing. So next item in our kit, this is Surgicel. And this is, of all the items in the kit, something that we do actually use in the operating room. Surgicel looks like a thin sort of pliable piece of fabric or like a meshy piece of material, but it contains agents that help get blood to clot. We use this in the operating room when we have a raw surface that's really oozing. If you have a specific blood vessel, that's actually easier to take care of because you can tie it off, you can cauterize it, but when you have a broad surface, it's hard to be able to fix every single area of that surface. And that's why we use something like Surgicel there. Next item in the kit is a small tourniquet. A word of warning about tourniquets in general. Tourniquets are dangerous. If you put a tourniquet on and leave it on for too long, you can cause serious damage. The best way to control bleeding, especially brisk bleeding, is a single fingertip placed against the spot of bleeding. But if you have a broad area or you don't have a fingertip available, those are situations when tourniquets can be more useful. In the medical world and in actual practice, the tourniquets that we use, especially like our trauma patients are bigger, much more rugged, much more durable. But if I'm making a survival kit that fits in a tin, I figured I'd include an itty bitty tourniquet that you see when we start IVs. So here it goes. Now, the next item in the kit is this tiny scalpel. This is a real scalpel. Normally in the operating room, we use longer scalpels, but this is the type of scalpel that we have in something like a central line kit. That's gonna go in here. It's getting a little bit more crowded in here. Next item in the kit is an alcohol pad. This is a little more symbolic than anything else, but we do still use these in the clinical setting if we need to clean a small area of skin, like before we place an IV. Next item in the kit is this tiny Swiss Army knife. Now, I already have a scalpel blade like you saw, but what's neat about this is that there are other tools on here like the scissors, so I thought this could be helpful to put in here. Almost out of space. So our second to last items are gonna be these matches. Now, there are lots of reasons that starting fire can be helpful in the survival situation, and there are ways that fire can be used to sterilize instruments. So I figured including matches would be great, and why not include special matches that can't be ruined by water? These matches that you see here are weatherproof and waterproof matches, so if these get damp and wet, they can still be used to start a fire. Now, a word of warning, if you are trying these for the first time, be extremely careful when you light one of these things because it's a really powerful flame, uh, and you can't easily just blow it out. So be in an environment where you have room and space until the flame burns itself out. Now, the final item on the kit are these little tabs. These are essentially iodine tabs, and you add two tabs of these to a quart of water, and that can basically clean your water and make it safe to drink. These are not water filters. They do not make the water necessarily taste better, but what these do is they help get rid of a lot of the pathogens that could make you really sick from drinking the water. All right, so those are the final items. I'm going to shove them into the kit here, and that's our surgical survival kit. Isn't that right, buddy? We're going to do this later, bud. Okay. Okay. All right, buddy. We use a lot more gauze. <laughs> Sorry. You like your bun, buddy? Your favorite toy? Okay. 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 I hope this isn't too noisy. This is his noisy toy.